I'd like to take you through the resources that you have available in Verbum Bible Software as part of our Townsville Catholic Education uh, APRE package. Uh, there is a PDF available, uh, which includes a full list of these resources, and I'll just take you through that section by section uh, so that you understand the uh, breadth and the depth of the resources uh, that have been made available to you. So we have provided you with a, a number of translations of the Bible. Um, and as you go through this document, um, those uh, resources that are in bold uh, are the more important or significant resources. Uh, and those uh, in red are ones that are worthy of note. So in terms of um, uh, the Bibles that are available for you, um, uh, there is the uh, the Good News Translation uh, with the Apocrypha. So it's the Good News Translation with the 73 books of the canon of Scripture that's found in the, the Catholic Bible. Uh, this, of course, is a version of the Scriptures that we tend to use in our primary schools uh, and sometimes with those with lower literacy. Um, there is uh, the next one there in that list is the Psalms, a new translation. Uh, by Jelano, if you're looking at the, the author name uh, in the library pane. Uh, this version of the Psalms is the same version, uh, the Grail translation, that we use in the liturgies of the church, Sunday Mass, funerals, uh, weddings, uh, um, the anointing of the sick. So, for example, if you want a copy of Psalm 23 that matches what you hear in church, uh, you'll find it there in the Grail translation. Uh, it is available um, uh, online um, if you Google Athanasian, A-T-H-A-N-A-S-I-A-N, Athanasian Grail translation. So, but we do have it included there. Uh, there is uh, the English Standard Version, uh, which, uh, like the New Revised Standard Version, uh, both are in the... Uh, in the, the line of the Revised Standard Version, so they graded the same uh, translation tradition uh, with some changes between them. And uh, then um, uh, the final one of note there is the Contemporary English Version, which is the translation that is used in the children's lectionary. So uh, uh, if you're using that the children's lectionary, uh, with school masses, this would be the version that matches that. So uh, we then have um, uh, under that of um, listed um, a number of study Bibles. So uh, study Bible, uh, of course, is a, a verse by verse or phrase by phrase uh, explanation of the the biblical text. So the Faith Life Study Bible is one that's freely available to um, all people, so to all your RE staff, and is an excellent study Bible. Uh, the ESV Study Bible, also excellent. Um, the NIV Bible Speaks Today notes uh, are very good uh, at providing us with links to today. Uh, they ask uh, questions which connects the world of the text to the world of today. The NIV Cultural Background Study Bible is one that I highly recommend if you're really trying to understand um, that, that world that lies behind the text in terms of the realities of day-to-day -day life, as well as the symbolic world in which the biblical people lived. Uh, and then finally, there of note is the Ignatius Catholic Study Bible, uh, the New Testament. There are also Old Testament volumes available uh, that uh, you'll definitely find helpful for linking scriptural texts to the teachings and practices of the, the Catholic Church. Um, we then have a, a number of Bible dictionaries. I'll scroll that down. Uh, so in this section here, we have Bible dictionaries. So again, the Lexham Bible Dictionary is that one that's freely available to all people um, through the Faith Life Study Bible, bible.faithlife.com. Um, we then include um, three excellent, uh, other excellent Bible dictionaries. Um, the Edmunds Dictionary of the Bible, and the HarperCollins Bible Dictionary, uh, non-denominational Bible dictionaries, uh, the Edmunds uh, Dictionary of the, uh, the, the Bible uh, is probably the more extensive of those two. And then there is the, the Catholic Bible Dictionary, which is an excellent Bible dictionary in and of itself, uh, but will also um, 
uh, in some places, make links to the uh, life and practice of the church. Uh, similar to study Bibles, um, we then have a number of commentaries available. Uh, so I um, uh, don't know if they go on to the next page. No, they don't. So I'll just leave those there. Um, and, uh, and hopefully you've prioritised all of these in your... Um, uh, in your uh, version online, uh, your downloaded version of Verbum. Uh, so uh, the Navarre Bible um, New Testament, uh, the Navarre Bible uh, is a commentary that originally came out of Spain, a Pontifical University at Navarre, uh, and has been translated into English. Uh, again, uh, it's very good at making the links to the life of the church. Um, and then uh, the Edmunds Commentary on the Bible covers the um, Deuterocanonicals, uh, covers the, the, the whole canon of Scripture from a Catholic perspective, so excellent as a one-volume commentary. Um, the IVP Bible Background Commentary um, to the New Testament and the Old Testament, similar to the Cultural Background Study Bible, just a little bit more in-depth uh, than that, so they're, they're connected. Um, the Harper's Bible Commentary and other very good one volume commentary. It's been superseded now, uh, but this was the one that came free, free-ish with the package we have. Uh, and then um, the New College for Bible Commentary is another uh, Catholic uh, Bible commentary. It's very cursory, uh, but I do recommend um, prioritising and at least reading what it has um, to offer. So moving on to the next section of those resources. Um, there are a number of um, Bible surveys and introductions, um, and a couple of those are, are really of note. Um, Luke uh, Timothy Johnson's um, The Writings of the New Testament, that's an introduction to the New Testament. So there's something on, um, on the development of the New Testament canon, on basic sort of background to the New Testament, but then sort of like an analysis of each book of the New Testament. This, this is a, a first year college or seminary course textbook. Uh, Peter Kreeft's um, You Can Understand the Bible uh, is just an excellent uh, overview of the, the Bible. Peter Kreeft's a philosophy professor at Boston uh, University. Uh, and then there's a, a few, um, uh, three uh, texts that I've marked in red there, uh, which are just worth knowing um, that, you, uh, that you have. Um, and these are all part of a TNT intro to the Bible series, and they're just an overview of Matthew, of Mark, and of Luke. So if you're studying texts from those uh, accounts of the gospel and you want to have a bit of a better understanding of where they're coming from and what are the themes, etc., those are three excellent books from that uh, TNT intro to the Bible series. There's some more in-depth um, Bible studies available. Sorry, I just need to clear that uh, box that I've got uh, on the screen. Uh, so some other Bible, biblical studies just on individual um, topics that are connected. So Raymond Brown, great Catholic scholar of the, the last century, one of the, the greatest Catholic biblical scholars of the last century, uh, wrote a book, 101 Questions and Answers on the Bible. So it's just filled with lots of information about the Bible to answer your and your students' questions. Uh, uh, Scott Hahn's book on God's covenant promises um, in Scripture uh, it's really great for an in-depth exploration of how the how the the basic idea of covenant functions within the scriptures, and then how that's lived out in those various covenants that we find: the Adamic, uh, the Noachic, the Mosaic, the Davidic, and in the New uh, Covenant. So they're just worth noting. Um, uh, the Come and See Study Bibles, the uh, sorry Bible Studies. Uh, these are written for um, everyday Catholics just to read their way uh, through the scriptures. And um, there are an enormous number of these come and see uh, Catholic Bible studies available in your package. Uh, the one on the synoptics uh, is a really good overview of, uh, of the synoptics. Uh, and then finally, there's a book by uh, Victor Matthews, 101 Questions and Answers on the Historical Books of the Bible. So if you're really trying to understand those historical books, that's good. In bold in that section, I have placed John Pilcher's A Cultural Handbook to the Bible. So John Pilcher's um, one of the sort of leading lights in terms of um, 
using the insights of anthropology and sociology to understand the world of the Bible. So looking at nomadic cultures today, uh, Mediterranean culture today and across the centuries and using insights from that to understand what's going on in various interactions and stories found in the scriptures. And so this is a bit of an overview handbook. Uh, he's also, uh, with others, uh, written more in-depth works um, like commentaries from that anthropological or sociological perspective. Um, there are a number of um, maps and uh, images available. Clear that box away. So you have Carter's Historical Atlas of Jerusalem. So it's the one Carter work that uh, we have in, included. Um, Carter's uh, maps and, uh, and diagrams are sort of famous. Uh, so that's one um, of the changes to Jerusalem over time. Uh, we then have included um, uh, several collections of sacred art, and we'll explore these in greater depth when we look at the media browser. Uh, but you know, we quite often do a Google search for, for these images, and they are available uh, in Verb and Bible software and accessible when you do, for example, a passage search on uh, the uh, visit of the, the wise men to the infant Jesus. Uh, it will pop up with a number of images from our, our tradition in terms of sacred art. So a fresco by Fra Angelico or a, a painting by Caravaggio. So, so they're available to you. Uh, under the section of um, liturgy and worship and the saints, um, Butler's Lives of the Saints. So that's that first one um, that's uh, mentioned there. Uh, yeah, it's an old text, 1903 and a very, very comprehensive text on the lives of the saints. Some of them probably aren't as uh, historically rigorous as we would tend to be today, uh, but if you wanted to know something about a particular saint, uh, you can find it there. Um, there's some wonderful resources by the Daughters of St. Paul, such as daily gospel reflections uh, on the Advent season or on the Easter season or on the Lenten season, and then through ordinary times, so it just takes the scripture readings of each day and offers some reflections, just little small reflections on those daily readings of the gospel. So you can journey with the church uh, through that. And if your classroom or your school does something with the gospel of the day, you'll find uh, uh, little reflections for yourself there that may be helpful in dealing with uh, with children. Uh, similarly, uh, Celia Siwa's Word of Life is a daily scripture companion that will take you uh, through the the uh, the gospel of the day uh, and offer your reflection on it. Um, saints and feasts of liturgical year will give you the saints as they come up uh, uh, through the church year. Um, and there is a copy of the Roman Missal there with the prayers that are connected to the saints. There's a whole lot of stuff um, that's from the, the liturgical life of the church. It's a number of um, texts related to doctrine or church teaching. Um, so, for example, the Catechism of the Church is there. Uh, so are the, the Vatican II documents. So they're available to you. If you're wanting to go to previous councils, you can find the Canons and Decrees of the Council of Trent. Um, there's then also an excellent a multi-volume resource on living the Catechism of the Church uh, so that connects the teaching of the Church to daily life. Uh, according to the four sections of the Catechism. And also Schoenborn's uh, excellent uh, UCAT, Youth Catechism, which uh, uh, really draws connections between the church's teaching and uh, the lived experience of young people. Uh, documents of various popes, other, uh, other texts related to church teaching about the popes, about saints, on God and evolution, on prayer, on the church, on Vatican II. There's a pocket Catholic dictionary. So it's an abundance of resources there. Um, the Fathers of the Church. So lots of different ones there on the Fathers of the Church, as well as a very, very good short history of the Catholic Church. If you're teaching one of the, the history units connected to RE, uh, there's information for you there. Lots on spirituality, and interestingly, lots on spirituality um, from the perspective of Christian meditation, as we call it, uh, or more broadly in our tradition, that is contemplation. Uh, and so uh, you find these books like by Thomas Dubai, which is uh, 
on Christian um, contemplation. Uh, and then there's this wonderful collection of books by Thomas Keating, uh, who is uh, sort of the modern father of uh, contemplative prayer, Christian meditation, as we call it in our schools, uh, that, uh, that really will help you to understand that uh, form of prayer and to practice it in your own life and in the life of your school. So you can see there's an enormous number of resources there on prayer. Uh, apologetics is that area of Christian life um, about responding to the questions of the, the modern person uh, and not apologizing for it, but explaining it. Uh, and so there are resources on, you know, on Mary, um, uh, on scripture from the perspective of the, uh, of the Catholic Church, responding to the new atheism. So you know, um, Richard Dawkins being the exemplar of that moral relativism, which is one of those sort of modern um, heresies that, that makes the life of faith difficult today. So Peter Kreeft has there written a number of books that are uh, responding to the questions of the modern person. So you see a large number of those. Uh, this is where you'll also find those books that I suggest that you actually delete from your library. So because they're just simply out of date and you don't want them sort of really appearing in your searches. You can leave them there if you want to, but I recommend just removing them from your library. And then yeah, as I was going through this, there were sort of books that I just really, you know, I was cutting and pasting, moving stuff around and got left with a few. And here's the few I got left with, uh, which are not words of no value, far from it. You know, Benedict XVI's book on God's word, how scripture and tradition and the, you know, the office of uh, the bishop and the pope meet is, a, is an excellent work. Uh, Chesterton's books, Heretics and Orthodoxy, are, are, are modern early 20th century classics on the the, the spiritual life. Uh, a couple more books even by uh, Peter Kreeft, you know, that could maybe go into the apologetic section. So you've been offered um, uh, with this Verbum software uh, an extraordinary collection of, uh, of resources uh, to assist you to develop your own knowledge and to provide uh, appropriate uh, quality information uh, to your staff so that you're not referring them, for example, to a Wikipedia article, uh, but rather being able to give them uh, quotes and sections of high quality uh, and in-depth works uh, on the life of faith as lived out in the Catholic Church.